Hey guys, good morning. Christmas is wrapped up, so I'm doing another recording. So I've I've dropped the resolution by one just for my own <coughs> personal preference because the subject of today's video is thinking about the looks of the battle screen right here, and so you'll notice a few things immediately. First of all, all of my characters now look like the warrior from Final Fantasy 1, and you can see that they're a lot more animated as they're receiving strikes from the imps. They're flinching a bit. When they attack they do the walk up as they were before but they do an actual attack with a weapon that they're holding which is the sword. I'm gonna let this play out a bit. You can see I've I've got them drawing what essentially I imagine the max amount of ailment icons I'd be able to draw. You can see it's pretty stacked. You can see I can almost fit in the 9th and 10th one at the back here. It's, they're just a little bit obscured by the the slightly bigger battle sprites here so realistically I'd move them slightly forward. I started the battle against 10 imps that's kind of how I imagine the maximum space that the imps would use. There's also I added this a while ago but there's some subtle effect where if the enemy isn't using up so many slots like if there are only six imps uh, they are pushed forward uh, slightly so they weren't so it's like if I fight two imps they're not all the way back here so it's a bit of unnecessary distance it'll push them forward. You can see as the heroes are getting low here they've got like a little damage crouch going and if the imps coordinate a bit we'll also see them dead. Yeah so what I'm thinking about is first of all having bigger battle sprites that are like these obviously um, it won't be these exactly but this is kind of my reference point. It allows them to be much more animated in how they react, like I like them being hit and flinching back like that. You can see this guy's been down so he's just dead, they're crouching. But particularly when it comes to executing commands, uh, I want to figure out before I go ahead and make a whole bunch of commands, I want to figure out what tools I have available to customize the way they execute commands. So one example is if they're bigger like this and they actually hold their weapon, I could maybe have them jump around a bit you know maybe if they do some kind of whirlwind sword technique they can like spin around the enemies something like that when we all die we all assume the form of our caskets here still the same oh it even updates in here I didn't notice <laughs> I will go on the battle and this should soft lock it there was also a subtle bug I wasn't paying attention in that run but if because the imps queue up so many moves when uh, there are so many actions taking place. What I noticed was happening as well that or what I've kind of observed is that if a character gets downed and then there are techniques on the battle stack that these imps still have to execute that are targeting that person uh, the desired behavior would be that they at time of execution reassess and pick another random target but what they're actually doing is they end up hitting the first target of the enemy which is this guy at the back. If you notice the imps getting randomly hit that was probably why. As for like a big screen observation a problem I'm having is with the width of the whole screen. Yeah, if I get this up here uh, this is Final Fantasy 3 you can see that's the same warrior. Uh, it's much more cramped and a lot of this like darker space is being used up because they they don't have this extra width that we do. It's making it look at times a bit distant if we're all the way to the right here and then there's only a few enemies down here. So what I'm thinking, because we do have a bit of breathing room, like we've got this whole margin here. All this stuff is has its purpose. Of course I need some kind of gap between the health bars and the actors so to <laughs> show the ailments currently. If we keep this margin about the same and then I can try and put a similar size margin here I was thinking I could in addition to this top like scenery art here maybe I can have two more pieces of art here so that our actual battle is uh, boxed in a bit more here and then that gives me a little bit more room to uh, add some scenery art so for a prison I'd have the wall here but for down here um, you know, I'd probably have the floor and I could have the floor fading to black as it gets closer here. Same on this side. And then it's not too much more effort. I don't have to produce a big art piece for the whole thing. Another thing is with five actors and being sandwiched between the wall art up here and the command box down here, 
they were pretty sandwiched. I'll just run it again to show how sandwiched they were. Double load into the fight again. Yeah, you can see there's actually no room at all, which uh, I'd be probably a little more comfortable if they just had like, I'm probably gonna aim for my uh, equivalent battle sprites to have like, basically one row of pixels shaved off on both sides, I think. But yeah, so this is what like a full battle screen looks like, full elements. Haven't figured out where exactly I'm going to put enemy ailments. Uh, I've always wanted bigger battle sprites because when you're in a battle, the scene's kind of meant to be zoomed up. Like it's closer perspective than uh, in the, like walking around a dungeon or a town that's meant to be zoomed out a little bit. And then when we're on the world map, we're super zoomed out and you can barely see the characters. So I want to keep those three levels of depth, I think. Anyway, in terms of animating, so what it will mean is that each class will need a an overworld set, which is quite easy. All they do is uh, walk in the two, four directions, and then a battle sprite set. So that's what this looks like, and if I show you my little notes here, uh, all these frames correspond to uh, these frames. So zero is idle when they're just idle in battle. We're on zero. Our walking goes between 1 and 2, just like that. Oh no, 0 and 1 for walk, sorry. 2 and 3 is melee slash. Uh, you didn't see the victory either because they're all dead, but they have that victory dance from Final Fantasy, you know, they just go... So it kind of looks like something like that. All the frames are in one sprite. And then of course, I won't show off the code, but uh, I had to do some more work on uh, dividing up this stuff into states I can I think the easiest way to show it is because the way the animation for the attack has changed now it doesn't spawn that floating sword that does the slash it actually changes the animation of the fighter uh, I can go to my object attack right here and then when we get to certain stages so stage 2 is the first stage that is after walking forward what we do when he's walked forward and he's ready to slash we create the slash spell effect on the enemy, which is this one, swing. And then also if it's a player doing the attack, we can set its state. We've got a bunch of battle animations, so we're setting it to melee, which is doing the sword swing. And then we also prepare to, oh uh, yeah, we set the, so we set the animation to be sword swing, and then we actually grab how long that animation is going to take with this. We're putting that information into this slash effect, so that sequences a little bit. So when this slash effect starts, there's actually a delay, and it's to sync up a bit more with when the slash is actually out, so they don't just start at the same time. And stuff like that. If I went to back to the parent object of this, when it's done wrapping up, it'll set the battle animation to walk as he walks back, and then set it back to uh, whatever the idle should be. And idle can change depending on the amount of health. If we're under 33% health, it'll be that kneeling down critical look. And if they're dead, well, they probably didn't play this animation at all. Cool. Now, as for my animations, of course, the warrior's only reference. Uh, I had a little bit of a go myself. So this is my my ever-growing scrappy sprite page. So what you can see here is our first class up here was the warrior. I'm trying to think of how I'd like the equivalent battle sprites to look. And this is my attempt. I haven't outright tried to copy the style. Uh, I tried to sync a little bit more to how I'm doing the overworlds, which is We've got very small hands on our characters. If I get the actual battlers from Final Fantasy, the overworld sprites, I mean. Uh, you can see for very accentuated walking, in general, they have like bigger hands and the hand goes small as they're behind. So the style's a little bit different. So in battle, my guys have little smaller hands, but the pose is quite similar. The head is completely to the side. And uh, on my first go, I had legs kind of like this. This looks like a nice kind of default pose with the legs. But in terms of animating them walking sideways, they're not facing an appropriate way where I feel like I could do the walk decently. So I took greater inspiration from the, the walk that they do, which is they just switch from this one leg and the other legs completely obscured behind. And then the legs just split as they walk. So I went for the same attempt. See the, my legs here, they're more forward facing. We do the splits as we walk and it's very 
small and fast so it doesn't have to look perfect. Uh, I looked at other sprites of course like a more modern one's Final Fantasy VI Locky over here. But yeah this is kind of what I came up with at first. One difficulty is the helmet is extremely stupid looking but that's fine that gives us a bit of flavor. Once I was like yeah okay I can kind of work like this I went and I actually compared it to uh, this sprite shit sprite shit this sprite sheet ripped by Neo Jeff apparently so thank you very much for the reference what I did was I took the animations that I'm actually using currently and I had to go at doing my own how well I've like done the black outline doesn't matter so much because the game the battles will all play on that back black background two weapon animations actually it starts with this one with the arm behind so the sword will be up here uh, the sword's separate of course because if I have like an axe um, we want the weapons graphic to suit what animation we're doing uh, and the second frame the coming down is just this second warp one with the split legs they use a lot of techniques like that in NES games because the sprites were so limited another technique they do is um, sprites in NES games uh, animated sprites they can only be 8 by 8 pixels which is you know these are much bigger than this yeah this is like a height of 25 or something so to do this or 24 they would have made this guy up with 6 8 by 8 sprites so like there, there 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 roughly so in a lot of animations only parts of it change because they can just change those two sprites for instance with walking you can see that it's distinctly just these bottom two areas right here that change and that's so that they don't have to have a whole crap ton of sprite uh, different sprites just to animate one character they have to reuse stuff uh, I believe they can mirror the sprites pretty easily so the legs on the victory pose like this they look like it's the same leg it, it'd be this leg I suppose and they've just mirrored it for a different effect but even knowing that and even realizing the full potential I have to do whatever I want I'm still restricted by my own artistic ability so this is the last thing I did, I did all these, I'll have a go at putting them in uh, for the next episode maybe, we'll take a look and I'll move things around the battlefield, see if I can get more happy with how the battlefield looks uh, before I put a lot of work into fleshing it out with content. Great, I'll leave it there I think, I'll catch you later, thanks for watching.